Jsou tu rejlec test distenuat multipurpose torch from Lidl supermarket. When I saw it, I just couldn't resist. There is the main LED, 10 watt LED in the front. Full power, medium, low. And of course this annoying flashing. I will actually try to do some modification to get rid of it. And this side LED. Full power white, low power white, red and red flashing. And it says it here, 100%, 50%, 25%, SOS signal and flashing. Does some regulation require these SOS and flashing signals or do they just enjoy making the product super annoying? Well, I wouldn't wonder if it was another stupid European regulation, but why even flashlights from eBay would have it? It comes with a USB-C charging cable, which goes into here. And of course it doesn't come with a charger, just the cable. So you have to use some dodgy eBay charger to charge it. And it comes with these color filters, which can actually turn it into a color. Green, red and blue, which is nice. I actually tested it with the red one for about a minute. And this actually got too hot to touch and I felt like it's softening already, so I stopped. Maybe putting a filter over a 10 watt LED, which basically dissipates most of the light, isn't the greatest idea. Well, it actually sort of looks a bit distorted in comparison to the other ones. It also has this. You can use it as some sort of signaling light. SOS, of course. Just two buttons here. When it's on, they illuminate blue which is a bit annoying, especially when you use it in a combination with the red one. Does a long press do something? Nothing in particular. Well, it would be a better idea if the flashing was accessible through a long press, so you wouldn't have to go through the flashing every time you're turning it off. Of course, if you're screaming, show a detail of the box. Here it is with some text on it, this, 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 and that's it. I don't read the manuals, but sometimes it's worth it. Pay attention to the distance between the product and the USB power supply, as the USB cable is only about 50 centimeters in length. The safety is always interesting. Danger of death, maintenance. The product requires no maintenance. The LEDs cannot be replaced. Neither the battery can be replaced by a normal user, of course. Danger to life. Keep batteries, rechargeable batteries out of reach of children. Makes sense when the battery can't be taken out. Never recharge non-rechargeable batteries. Jesus! Well, there's a rechargeable battery built into it already and a normal mortal can't change it. Wear protective gloves. Environmental damage. Well, at this point I guess a brain damage in a typical customer is a bigger concern. Well, there is finally something interesting. 1 watt for side light, 10 watts for front light. It contains a lithium-ion 37 volt battery, 18650, 1800 mAh. Of course not replaceable. Now the front light to side light ratio is 10 to 1, so why the operating times are not a 10 to 1 ratio? Side light 5 hours, front light 1.5 hours. Well, 1800 mAh, that's 1.8 mAh, times the voltage 3.7 volts, that's 6.66 watt hours. 6.66 watt hours divided by the 10 watt LED is 0.666 hours of operation times 60 minutes in an hour, about 40 minutes operation at full 10 watts, or even less of course considering the losses of the power supply, or a regulator or whatever there is, it could be just a resistor. So if they say 1.5 hours or 90 minutes, it's more than double of what is realistic, but I guess it's not running at constant 10 watts, it's declining as the battery discharges. It starts at 10 watts and then it's lower and lower. It was 6.66 watt hours divided by 1 watt is basically 6.66 hours, which is more than 5 hours they claim, which would be about 30% extra for maybe the losses in the resistor in series. What does it say here? 3.7 volts. That's the battery again, 10 watts. Nothing else interesting probably. The IP rating and of course it's zoomable. Nice. It has a hook here, but enough of this. Everybody wants to see it open, of course. It has two screws here, one here, one from the other side. And then this just pops out. Here's the USB cover and the seal. And 
the internals here. So let's just pull. Well, it actually goes the other way. Here is this cover with the seal, nice. And here is the battery with some protection on it, probably. 1800 milliamp powers, 6.66 watt hours as I calculated, and three wires going to it. One is probably some thermistor sending the temperature. It actually says it here battery minus, battery plus, and NTC thermistor. Here's the 5 volt connection from the charging port. This actually pops out. Here's the port. Nothing else on this board. And the LEDs, the white LEDs and the red ones in between. White, white, lower power, red, flashing off. And the blue LEDs illuminating the buttons. These four are the blue ones. And these three are double colored LEDs. Red and green indicating charging, red, and fully charged green. You can of course use both in any combination. And here you can see the two wires going to the main power LED in it. There is really nothing interesting in the head. Just one LED. It doesn't have a red one here, but I guess when you fit a 10 watt LED into such a tiny flashlight, there is no space for the red chip, even though I would appreciate it a bit. At least I have a red here. And these cool white LEDs, I'm actually thinking about replacing them with yellow LEDs or warm white LEDs. Do not disassemble or modify. Well, too late. The charging cable goes in here and that's the red LEDs indicating the charging. The green ones are in the same packages. And these blue LEDs annoy me. What if I put yellow LEDs here? And the blue LEDs are removed. I didn't like them, of course. I horribly botched some yellow LEDs into it. One per button is enough, I think. And now the buttons are yellow. Much nicer. Nice botch. Using this thing, if you can imagine it. I decided to horribly botch in yellow LEDs instead of the two cool white LEDs here. I'm just taking off the top of the white LED and putting a yellow LED on it because it's a different size. So the remains of the white LED actually work as an adapter. One more yellow LEDs in. And that's it. Now it's way nicer. Warm white light, about 3000 kelvins. And the front one is at least 6000. To me the front one actually appears slightly cooler than a 6500 kelvin daylight fluorescent tube, so it could be even 7 or 8000 kelvins. And a comparison of the front one to a cloudy daylight. And a comparison of the side one to a tungsten lamp. It's actually slightly cooler. The side one is warmer than a 4000 Kelvin tube. And almost as warm as a 3000 Kelvin tube. And of course before the modification the side light was the same color temperature as the front light. Now this one is nicely warm, this one is still very cool, but it actually makes sense. The brighter the light, the cooler it has to be to be pleasant. And the dimmer it is, the warmer it has to be to be pleasant. And this can be seen in the Kruidhoff diagram. And I guess this is because of the Purkinje effect. But now of course let's take a look at the other side of the board closer. There is a 14 pin microcontroller with no marking. This does the modes. Two chips, some charging controllers, 4056. They're probably used two in parallel. One has two pins unused. I guess they're using just one of them to control the LEDs. This I guess goes into the green and red LEDs, indicating the status of charging. Some transistors probably in the protection circuit for the battery. This pin is the input of the button for the main light. And this pin is the input for the button of the side light. And the LEDs are switched by transistors. One output of the microcontroller goes via this resistor into this transistor or MOSFET. And this one switches the red LEDs. And these two resistors in parallel are in a series with the red LEDs. Another output goes via this resistor into this MOSFET gate. And this transistor actually switches the white side light. This parallel combination is the series resistor of the side light, the white one. And these two MOSFETs in parallel switch the main light. There's again a resistor in a series with the gate of the MOSFETs. And this three resistor parallel combination is the series resistor of the main front light. Because these resistors are in a series with the LEDs illuminating the buttons. And of course you could change these resistors, these or these to change the current of the LEDs. One interesting thing I noticed is that the dimmer modes 
don't flicker in camera from the pulse width modulation. Most torches are using just a couple hundred hertz pulse width modulation to dim the LEDs, which typically flickers in cameras, but this one doesn't flicker in camera. Either the main one, full, medium, low, no flicker in camera, unlike other torches. This is full brightness, no flicker, low brightness, a flicker or bars, because it's pulse width modulating. And this one full and lower. So this one has to be using either a linear regulation or a very high frequency. Now the side light at a low brightness and let's measure the frequency going into its switching MOSFET gate here. Wouldn't it be boring to use a modern meter? It's almost 20 kHz. Quite a high frequency for LED pulse width modulation. Does this explain us why there is no flicker in the camera? And the front light uses the same frequency. Measuring the chip output for the white side light. Full brightness. There is actually a very very short of time. A low brightness. About 50% the duty cycle. And now the front light. Full brightness. And it's not actually constantly on. Medium brightness. And low brightness. It's always using a pulse width modulation, even for the full brightness, for some reason. And the dead time used for the flashing and the SOS mode is actually shorter than for the full brightness. The red one is the only one that's actually continuously on when it's running. The red one and the flashing red. And I should also mention the yellow LEDs I'm watching in it are phosphor yellow LEDs, not the standard yellow. So they drop about 3 volts, and their voltage drop is about the same as a blue LED or a white LED voltage drop. It would be trickier to put the standard 2 volt yellow LEDs into it, but of course the advantage of those phosphor yellow LEDs is that they can be easily about 3-4 times more efficient than the standard yellow LEDs. And also they have a much wider spectrum. Standard yellow LEDs have a very narrow yellow peak, whereas these phosphor yellow LEDs basically contain everything from red, orange, yellow and yellow green. And even a bit of green. They're almost like warm white LEDs but without the blue spike. And these are using a blue or violet chip to pump the phosphor. Not unlike in white LEDs, the blue light is actually not getting out or very little of it. And here's a simplified schematic of it. Not the battery charging and protection part, just what controls the modes. Here's the microcontroller with no marking. It has two buttons going into it. Two outputs which could control the blue backlight of the buttons separately, but they don't. Of course now it is just one yellow LED for each output. And here three main outputs. One controls the red LEDs, one the side white LEDs, and one the main front LED. They seem to put one kilo ohm resistors everywhere. The MOSFET is have pulled down 100 kilo ohm resistor also. Now the question is, is it possible to eliminate the flashing modes? Well, it could be possible if I changed this chip, but it has no markings and I don't even know, is it some special chip or is it a microcontroller with a program? If it had a program, it would be probably complex to somehow download, modify and put it back. So let's try another approach. Let's make it automatically step through the flashing modes. Let's try to eliminate the side light flashing first. The red one flashes before the off mode, so let's just take this signal and somehow feed it back into this input. You cannot connect it directly, neither via a resistor. This would be like keeping the button pressed all the time. But what if I put a capacitor here? So when it's flashing it gives a pulse into the input and skips over the flashing mode. Now of course the question is what value? I tried many values and it seems like it doesn't work at 4.7 nano, but it does work at 6.8 nano. And anything up from it all the way to 1 micro, there's no need to go higher. They also noticed it actually works a bit faster when it's above 47 nano. So this really works even better. Here it takes less of flashing cycles before it turns off. So I guess a common value 100 nano will be the best. But eliminating the front light flashing is a bit harder, because this output is using a pulse width modulation in all modes. He was also trying to put a capacitor from here to here, but it just keeps stepping through the modes until it reaches off. For an easier experimentation, let's bring this point, this point and this point into a breadboard. Now it looks like this, just wires botched into it. Now let's try to press the button, and there is just the capacitor between the input and output. When I press it, it goes through all the modes and stops in the off mode. So this is not going to work. We need a bit more than just a capacitor. To get rid of the high frequency pulsing, we need a low pass filter. 
this stops 20 kHz, but the flashing is just a couple hertz, still gets through. And then a DC decoupling capacitor, and then it goes into the input. And this thing with the internal pull-up resistor is basically a high-pass filter. And putting a current meter across the button at 4.1 volts, it passes 53 microamps. Putting it into the calculator, this means the internal pull-up resistor is about 77 kiloohms. So this thing is a high-pass filter, this is a low-pass filter, and the whole thing combined could be seen as a bend-pass filter. I did a lot of trial and error, and this seems to work the best. Even though this combination also worked. And now let's see it in operation. High, medium, low, one press, it blinks twice, automatically steps through the flashing modes and turns off. The flashing and the SOS gets skipped. We have to somehow botch these components into it. Now it's such a massive pile of botches. Here's the 100 nano capacitor eliminating the red flashing and this red wire going from the output, the green wire going from the input for the button, and the circuitry eliminating the front flashing and SOS mode. And of course another possible modification would be changing this 1800 power cell for something with more capacity. And that's it, the front one, high, medium, low, couple flashes and automatically off, and the side one, white full power, low power, Red, couple flashes and automatically turns off. After completely discharged it started charging at 1.2 amps. Halfway charged about the same. Now the charging current about halved, because the battery is almost charged. This charges the battery to this voltage. And here's the table of the LED currents, voltage drops and powers. With the battery right after fully charged at 3.6 volts and 3.1 volts. For the front LED at the full power setting, side white LED for the full power setting and the red LED. And you can see that from the full battery to the half discharged battery, the power doesn't really decline that much. And there is some pulse width modulation compensation of the declining voltage, so up to a certain point the power doesn't decline that steeply. In simple torches with no regulation the power basically keeps declining and it never actually shuts down. But because at the low current the voltage drop of a white LED is about 2.5 volts, it still does not discharge the lithium-ion battery below its minimum safe voltage. But in this one the power declines slowly, and then it speeds up because it runs out of the pulse width regulation, and then it actually shuts down suddenly, which in some applications could be a bit dangerous, but on the other hand you get near full power from it for longer. I decided for three yellow LEDs, making it about 2600 kelvins. Definitely not a bad torch, and this video is getting bloody long. I will probably upload a real life test of this one in a mine in a separate video, and I might also put a solar panel in front of it and record how the brightness declines over time. So that's it, and if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button, because this video was quite laborious to make, and big thanks to all of you who already support me, because this keeps my channel running.